The Gifted, Season 1, Episode 1, Thoughts. This episode was called Exposed. And, yeah, quite good first episode. Spoilers for everything X-Men leading up to and including this episode. Yeah, uh, let's dive right in. So, yeah, we open on the, the chase culminating in teleportation. I quite appreciate that the show just hits the ground running and, you know, this, yeah, like, pretty much right away, we're on the side of the, I gotta, the, I'm not, I do not have track of people's names yet, so her name was Clarice. You know, we're, we're on her side and not really thinking, oh, these are, you know, these cops are just, yeah, yeah, we're, we're, it's pretty clear that the, the cops are not doing something that's necessary. This is awful. And yeah, like the, you know, the show immediately sets up, you know, this is going to be a bit more of an action show than Legion. Love Legion. Not saying that needed more action. Not a criticism of that show. This, you know, the both of them being on around the same time being X-Men properties, yeah, you kind of want to make sure that it doesn't feel like it's, oh, it's just the same exact show. And, yeah, um, the, yeah, the, the episode does a really great job giving us a sense of everyone's personality and their interpersonal relationships, like the, the tension between Lorna and Marcos, You know, there's that thing about, you know, do you need me to warm you up? No, but you can warm me up later. You know, and and yeah, later we find out she's pregnant. So yeah, this is, they've they've been having unprotected sex for a while, which, yeah, you know, they weren't expecting her to get caught. So it's, you know, otherwise it might seem a little irresponsible to risk pregnancy, but yeah. Um, let's see the, um, you know, I would, I would definitely say like by the end of the episode, I couldn't tell you everybody's names, but I have a pretty decent idea of personalities, interpersonal relationships, and some sense of what they can do with their powers. And let's see the, um, yeah, uh, very, very cool when Lorna uses telekinesis against the cops. And I quite appreciate, like, again, you know, they're basically, they're just, you know, these these mutants are just defending themselves against the cops. It's the cops who start, like, shooting. Like, for all they know, there's, like, innocent people in there. But, you know, American cops, very trigger happy. But, but yeah, and, and the little details of tactics, like the the... One of the, the cops, she just, like, turns to the side so he can't be shooting mutants. She she pushes two cop cars together so that that blocks the path. She stops some bullets. And, yeah, you know, when the, the one cop, you know, hits Marcos, yeah, she is not okay with that and... You know, she says later she wasn't trying to to take him out, and I believe her. It did look like she, you know, she wanted to hurt the cop, but not quite, you know, permanently. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, Reed and Kate Strucker both talking to the, the, the principal, I think he's, and... Yeah, um, you know, he's, he's, basically, it's not enough is, is happening for their taste. And, you know, he brings up the, the, um, care, or C-A-R-E. And, yeah, you know, it is this thing, like, sadly, there are a number of, 
high schools, schools in general, that just are not equipped to deal with bullies. And let's see the yeah, and and you know he he threatens to to sue, and you know, he says was was the glare over the top? I think it was the perfect amount of glare. I agree, Kate's on point there. And yeah, you know, there's he's he's got to leave suddenly, and you know she says the the kids will be okay. They know you keep us safe. And you know, not long after we realize both kids are mutants. So yeah, he's not. Yeah, he's trying to keep non-mutants safe from mutants, as if there would be a problem if they weren't being vilified. And yeah. It's, you know, it's it's one of those things where, you know, in, in order to try to challenge bigotry, it you know, what if we make it personal? What if the bigot, you know, loved someone who was actually part of this minority group? And I can appreciate, you know, some people feel it's it's very contrived. I mean, the way I see it, this sort of thing happens all the time, but we're seeing the one case where, you know, yeah, Reed actually had, he, he knows enough about what they do so that he and, you know, his family can get, you know, a little bit of a head start, though ultimately Jace Turner and the others do catch up to them. Great seeing Kobe Bell in a Matt Nix show again. And the... Um, yeah, you know, the, um, I think that's what I had to say about, R right, and, and yeah, in real life, you know, yeah, sometimes that is the one thing that, fi you know, finally a bigot, you know, is, is able to empathize when it's actually the, you know, someone close to them who has this minority identity. And let's see. So throughout this this episode, I, I can imagine it'll be a theme for the show. It really felt a lot like they're a stand-in for LGBTQ plus identity. The way that you know trans people are being attacked by you know legislators as well as just you know regular yeah like people who don't have who aren't holding political office you know, and it also made me think some uh, somewhat of, like, refugees. There's certainly the, this thing of, you know, we're going to get the family to Mexico, they're going to get new IDs and, and this sort of thing. You know, that's somewhat like the opposite of the, you know, in in reality, it's it's people... I mean, there there are some people leaving America, but... Yeah, it, it especially made me think of people trying to get from South America and, and other countries into America. And... Okay, so... Um, I think his name was Jack. Um, the uh, Lauren's boyfriend, he asks... Or, or the, yeah, she's asking, you know, can you just pick one of these outfits for the dance? And he says the blue one, and I, I mean, I guess, I, I don't know, it looked, it looked green to me. Is this a, what color is that dress situation? And, let's see, I, I read the, the, um, what's it called? MDB Goofs, nobody entered it, so I don't know, maybe it's just me. And, yeah. Um, at the, at the table, Andy, not yet knowing that he's a mutant, you know, yeah, is being very insensitive and uses a slur, and, you know, showing that in, in the universe of this world, that kind of thing is just, yeah, um, very, it's, it's normalized, you know. And, you know, it, it hurts all the more when we realize later, 
Lauren is a mutant and has been for three years, so you know it cuts deep when he uses that slur. And and that's again that's a thing that you know I've I've you know heard accounts of people who have come out as you know LGBTQ plus and you know yeah some someone that they cared about used a slur not knowing that they were a, a part of that minority and uh, let's see then we get the yeah we get the mention of the the mutant underground that you know Lorna Dane is the the you know she has a connection with with them and you know Reed is trying to get information out of her and just in case I'm not going to repeat her exact words but yeah you know she has that line about you know if I wanted for that to happen that's what would have happened and yeah um badass and also yeah you know she makes a good point and and yeah you know it's it's a very what's the word the the um yeah you know it's a it's a very clear way of communicating to him you know it's not just the the words and Let's see. Yeah, and uh, you know, he shows her uh, a piece of paper, and she, you know, gets gets very angry, and he he gets out of there. And that is one of those things where you know I can appreciate that they did it for like dramatic effects. So this isn't really a criticism. I'm not saying that they that I wish they would have done it different. If this was in the real world, and I was Reed, I think I might have walked a little further away and just like said the content of the paper rather than show it to her right after she's messed with the the screws but then you know the fact that he even walks that close to her despite the fact that clearly he's not supposed to that's him showing that he's not afraid of her her messing with the screws in his leg is saying well you should be and I'm not intimidated by you coming this close to me and him then showing the paper you know yeah that's basically like yeah he's saying checkmate there's nothing you can do that is going to yeah I have the power here and yeah um, Andy sneaks out so that you know he can go to this the school dance and the I, I really like the relationship. It's a very credible sibling dynamic between the two. You know, he's like trying to explain how the the yeah how he's being raised. You know, there he thinks that his parents are too overprotective, and you know he can't quite come up with the word. And she's like. Veal, you're, the, the word you're looking for is veal, and finally she relents and and drives him there, and you know, the the detail that you know he makes his case, and then he sits there. He doesn't like get out of the car and say, you know what, this was a bad idea. I'll just sneak back in. No, he sits there because he knows, you know, he makes an appeal to her. You know, she is a more sensitive and you know giving person so yeah you know eventually she's gonna cave and love the the cut from the music you know yeah the music in the car the music at the at the party and <laughs> Jack must really be comfortable around Andy there's a lot of young guys who would not have been okay with because like Andy straight up like he walks up and he like pushes 
the two of them apart, which, like, I appreciate that Jack doesn't want to, you know, he doesn't want to upset Lauren, but that's still a lot. There's a, there's a lot of people who would not have taken that well. And he says, don't get pregnant, which is a very nice little, that, that plants the idea in our head, you know. So by this point, we know that Lorna Dane and Marcos have a, you know, sexual relationship, you know, ongoing. We know that there's something on a piece of paper that Lorna really hated to see. And now there's that mention of, you know, if you're not careful, sex can lead to pregnancy. So, you know, it doesn't come out of the blue when later it is revealed, yeah, Lorna is pregnant. And, yeah. Um, I've seen some people question, you know, why did Andy go back to school if the, you know, the bullies are there? The way I see it is he's trying to take control of the situation. Like, there's only so much he can do to avoid school. Like, short of, like, changing schools or homeschooling or something, which, you know, pretty sure they don't have time for homeschooling. It's possible they could afford a tutor. Anyway, getting into the weeds here. Going to try to get back out. Basically, at some point he's going to have to go back to school. And so he's saying, you know what, fine, I will go back to school. I'm going to do it on my terms. And, yeah, uh, the bullies, you know, drag him in and, and, like, drench him in first water that's too cold, then water that's too hot. And, you know, this is one example of many where, yeah, literally bullying is torture. And, yeah, um, his, his mutant powers manifest and, you know, the, the, yeah, kind of reminded me of, like, Magneto in the first X-Men movie, you know, the young kid, really emotional and, you know, these, like, yeah, several people around him that, where it's like, well, together they should be strong enough to take him out, but, yeah, that ends up not being the case. And, yeah, badass Lauren saying, I'm going to go find my brother. Like, the, the building's, like, seeming collapsing. And she's like, no, that's, yeah, seriously badass. And I appreciate that, like, later they're still, like, bickering with each other, arguing over, you know, the car that they're in, you know. The seat's too sticky, and it just, you know, and she points out the other car was stolen. They're going to be looking for the stolen car, you know, all this stuff. So just, yeah. And, yeah, so Clarice says that her family situation is complicated. So I'm guessing we're going to find out more about that. So I appreciate the little detail there or I guess it's possible that it's a it's a reference to the the comics let's see right blink yeah I I do know a little bit about the character blink anyway um let's see yeah and I think it is accurate to the the comics certainly it's a it's a really cool element I don't want to be a purist here this thing of, you know, yeah, she can make these portals, but the portals can also cut apart stuff. You know, you see, that she, you know, she didn't mean to, to take part of the, the, I don't know, blinker or whatever it's called from the, the siren, whatever, from the, the top of the, the cop car. Obviously, that was, yeah, that happened, but it wasn't supposed to be. And then we get a mention that, you know, the X-Men and the Brotherhood are just missing and possibly permanently gone. Which, you know, that is an interesting, you know, we've, like, this, this episode first aired in 2017. You know, the first X-Men movie, live-action movie, was in 2000. So, by this point, yeah, people... You know, if if they were already watching comic book stuff, they knew who the X-Men and the Brotherhood were. 
and also, you know, so far at least, the show hasn't really done anything that you need to know a lot of stuff about. Like, comparatively, I don't think I would recommend... You know, if you're gonna... If, if you don't know that much about the MCU, don't start, you know, at, like, season two of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or something. You know, that's an amazing season of television. But, you know, that very much expects you to have watched, at the very least, the first season. And, yeah, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is kind of a show that expects you to know some stuff about the MCU. It's it's primarily for people who watch the MCU. This show so far, you know, like, if you're not super into to comic book stuff at all, there's probably some stuff that's going to be deal-breaking, but that's, you know, I don't... I don't think we need to only be making media for people who aren't already somewhat open to that type of media. And... See. Yeah, I, I quite appreciate the, you know, Kate thought it was a miracle, but it was really mutant power. You know, that is... It, it is this thing of, you know, it's basically just two different ways of looking at, you know, is it a miracle? I mean, after all, it did good. It was, you know, it saved their... it saved them from this car crash. So, you know, does that not make it a miracle? But, on the other hand, Dad certainly doesn't, you know, Reed is always saying this is a, a bad thing. We have to stop all these terrible mutants. And, let's see. You know, and that is something, like, there's a, a number of LGBTQ plus people who, once they're they're really comfortable with their identity, yeah, they, they realize it's, you know, it can be a wonderful thing. I, I'm not a member of the community, so I can't speak for them. But just what I've heard others say is, you know, yeah. And I, I think it's beautiful to be happy with your identity if it's not hurting anyone. And LGBTQ plus identity is not automatically hurting people the way, you know, fascism, which opposes LGBTQ plus people, is hurting people. And not only LGBTQ plus people. And then we have the... Um, yeah. Um, Sentinel services. And not long after, the words Sentinel services. Exactly like that. Not just Sentinels or the service or something. They, specific, they, they really hammer it home. Which, you know, I, I honestly, there's so many homophobes... I, th that need for stuff to be hammered home bef before they understand it. But yeah, it's very clear, like, they're, they're saying these are the SS, you know, like, the Nazi, yeah. So that's, uh, yeah. You know, the comics have Sentinels. I, I don't offhand remember reading a comic story where they were outright referred to as Sentinel Services. But yeah, you know, the people who are, you know, empowered by the government to, to hunt down LGBTQ plus people and refugees and such, yeah, there is a, a fascist vibe to that, you know. Ice. The, the um, yeah, and, and certainly there was in 2017 after Trump was elected, so... Yeah, I seriously respect them for, for actually confronting it like this. And, yeah. Um, the, the, the SS keep insisting, you know, they your kids have to come with us. And you have this thing of, you know, and yeah, they mention the, what did they say, the Renewed Patriot Act or something along those lines, you know. The um, there was something about that that it was amended. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, the amended Patriot Act allows us to just take people into custody, just like that. You know, the um, yeah, and and uh, again, like I I don't think it was random that they you know they could have just made up a new word, but they specifically referred to the Patriot Act, 
which did take away a lot of civil liberties. So, yeah, it's it's sadly very, very realistic. And, yeah, we see Reed realize that it's his own children that are mutants. You know, he hears, oh, there was an incident with mutants. Our kids aren't mutants, so, you know, the, and, and mutants are the bad guys. So, you know, that's, that's how his mind still works. It's like a shock to the system to realize that that's not the case. And... Yeah, and, you know, he says, no, you don't understand. We have to go now. And, yeah, he calls Carla and gets the, the file. And I appreciate the, the little bit where, you know, Jace t tells this, this other guy that, you know, works with Reed. In my experience, things change when it's your own kids. You know, I'm not saying, it, it's not really, like, humanizing for Jace. It seems like he's going to be very much just a, a villain. It, I, maybe later he'll get more dimension, but so far they haven't really given him any. And I'm fine with that. It just sounds like, yeah, yeah, because that actually, yeah, the way he says it, it doesn't sound like he really empathizes. It's just, like, it's, it's, um, it's like the, the, um, you know, when you're, you're, what is it, Americans are made to, like, d dissect a frog, you know, it's like, hmm? yes, I do believe I have correctly identified the frog's heart, this is definitely, you know, it more than like, oh, my heart goes out to him, like, oh, I'm a father, I, yeah, it's, it's really, really hard, you know, like, no, he's thinking, well, my kids aren't mutants, so, you know, it's a it's a strategic assessment, not empathy, and but but yeah, the, this thing of you know yeah the the file will get read enough information that he can get in touch with the mutant under underground, very clever, and yeah, then we have this thing of yeah Andy blames himself, you know. He has this line like, you know, it's good, good, certainly is a good thing that I destroyed our lives or something like that, you know. And, you know, I appreciate Lauren actually trying to, to help. And there's this thing about, you know, I told you how to swim. I'm going to teach you how to use your mutant powers. And, yeah, you know, at first it's it's going well. They're, they're practicing on the, the fridge without a door. But, yeah, you know, he loses control of his, his powers. Very important part of, you know, mutant, yeah, mutant stories in Marvel comic, Marvel media that involves people just discovering their powers as them losing control of them. And it is, uh, uh, like, the detail that... You know, I, as far as I can tell, it just moves too fast for her to actually form the, the shield. You know, that's why instead she grabs him and turns, turns around, so she's covering his body with hers. You know, and yeah, she actually, you know, her, her hand or arm gets slightly injured. You know, maybe she can borrow some of Marcos's you know, bandage thing, yeah, and, let's see, yeah, um, Clarice comes in and is like, so, sorry, I didn't mean to get your girlfriend caught, you know, and, and he's like, you know, you know I, I get it, that's, and, and the, you know, yeah, He's like, can you can you teleport us in there though? And she's like, I don't know, it goes wrong. And like, again, you know, because it's a TV show, of course she has to pick up something that might be, you know, she doesn't like ask, hey, do you have like a blank piece of paper I can demonstrate? This? Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, the the you know cuts the the thing in half and like, uh, this was actually her favorite toy, and the dog's like, how could you do this? What did I do to person? 
<laughs> just adorable. Um, yeah. If you want to get the audience to sympathize, you know, put a put a cute dog in there. And the let's see. Um, then we have the yeah. Um, you know, Reed mentions you know medical situation and. Marcos gets out of him, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's pregnancy. Let's see, and, uh, right, also the, the thing, of, or wait, no, yeah, that's, that's later, I don't know why that's, oh, no, wait, you're right, that's right, yes, that's on the phone, is the, yeah. And I seriously respect, like, Reed actually does tell him, you know, it, it would have been really dishonest to, to not, you know, put... Yeah, he, he lets Marcos decide whether or not to, to help, because, yeah, until recently, Reed was trying to fight mutants. And I, I think that, you know, it's a very strong... It, it shows a lot of strength of character. And, yeah, and then we see a drone outside, it's, you know, it recognizes the, the plates of the, the car, and, yeah, it's this very, like, surveillance state kind of thing, which, again, huge problem in America these days. And then we get a Stanley R.I.P. cameo, and, you know, there's that, like, for, for just, uh, um, you know, just briefly... As he passes by the sign, it briefly reads X's Lounge, you know, the X-Men Lounge, you know, famously created the X-Men, so, yeah. The one thing is, I, I wish they gave him a line, you know, he, in a lot of these cameos, he got just, like, a brief line, and, you know, but he, you know, he did have a very recognizable face, so most people probably picked up even without that. And I appreciate, like, Marcos is not okay with Reed. Like, you know, he's, he like, using his powers on his hand or arm, something like that, and, and threatening him. You know, there, there's that thing about, you know, if, if this is a trap, I, I'm just going to tell you, you know, things get intense around it or something, something like that. And, yeah, you know, he says, here's the deal. Your family can come, you know, to the to the underground, but you stay with me until we get Lorna out. And Clarice adorably, like she's duct taped up the the toy, and and you know the the dog seems pretty happy with the with the outcome. So that's a, a sweet little yeah. And. I think that's also right around the time where we have the thing about, you know, yeah, uh, Clarice goes to um, John, I think is his name, and, you know, it's like, so, um, Marcos, there's this thing, and, you know, John's like, oh, don't worry, yeah, he's, he gets emotional, whatever it was he said, I'm sure he didn't really mean it, you know, and, and she's like, no, like, he's on a mission, and he didn't tell you. <laughs> And and this thing of you know just like why didn't you tell me? Well, he told me not to say, but now I'm thinking you know just yeah, very nicely done. And yeah, you know if John hadn't you know yeah, they would not have been able to to get away if Clarice and John hadn't gone to to rescue. And yeah, you know Marcos didn't want you know it's one of those things where like yeah, I didn't ask because I knew you'd say no. And yeah, we get to the the climax with you know very very cool with the you know you hear the the tires screeching in the distance and the, the sirens and there's that thing of like there there's no way they could follow us looks like they found a way and yeah and and you know Reed tries to to use the the law you know he he. Jace says, you know, surrender, and Reed says, 
basically, you know, we have our rights, we, we want a lawyer, and Jace just says no. You know, at this point, they don't have any civil rights because that's not, you know, yeah, the people who decided these things didn't like the idea of their destroying people's lives being slowed down. And let's see. Yeah, I, I appreciate the, the ominous, you know, should we use the weapon? And just, yeah. And that is legitimately super cool. Like, um, okay, so basically, it's like this little robot that, you know, that, boy, Sentinels sure shrank in the, yeah. I, I'm not expecting them to actually bring out the, the massive, like, skyscraper-sized Sentinels from the comics and the animated show, and some of the movies. But the, yeah, um, including by this point, yes, in the, but no, the, these little, you know, fast little things, and they've got, like, they, they have this kind of spider squid thing going, and if you destroy one of their legs, they'll just, you know, oh, this leg does not seem to be working anymore. Let's get rid of that and just move just as fast as they did before. Very clever. You know, that means you have to basically take out every single leg, you know, if you want to stop any one of them, any, any one of these spider squids. Squids. And the, uh, let's see, does that, it sounds like a, like a, is that a, like a Brooklyn thing? Hey, I got my squid over here. And yeah, the thing, you know, remote to targeting, very clever. So if just one of these things finds you, the rest of them can, can, to go to that place is very very cool and Andy uses his powers to, to take out some of the squids over here and yeah Clarice manages to, to you know she can't hold the portal open quite long enough so Reed does end up in the you know SS hands and yeah this was a really strong opener um even if i hadn't already decided that i was going to watch the entire show already yeah this would definitely get me to yeah um so this episode was actually directed by brian singer which yeah we do now know that he's sexual predator um you know here's hoping that his oh that's right he actually yeah he hasn't directed a movie since he yeah he hasn't directed anything since 2018 so you know it's possible that his career won't you know although sadly there are a number of sexual predators in hollywood now Right, and obviously, you know, the name Brian Singer does not really mean anything to you. Yeah, he directed, you know, X-Men 1, 2, Days of Future Past, and Apocalypse. So, you know, three good movies and one that was pretty mid. And, yeah, um, this is the second Matt Nix created show I've watched. Uh, wait a second. Did I? Holy crap, I completely forgot. This is the third one. Although chronologically the second, so I wasn't completely wrong. You know, he also created Burn Notice and True Lies. And yeah, I gotta say that I think this is the strongest start for those three shows. Of all three shows, that's it. And yeah, um, really, really, yeah, I'm glad I don't have to wait long. I'm gonna be watching episode two tomorrow. And right, and and uh, real quick, I'm gonna do the entire first season. You know, gonna try for one episode per day. We'll see how it goes. And once I've done those 13 episodes of season one, I'm gonna do the entire run of Inhumans. Pray for me, and then I'm gonna do 
Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5. Then it's Legion Season 2, Cloak and Dagger Season 1. Then it's Season 2 of, of this show. So, yeah. Um, it will be a little bit once I've once I'm all the way done with this season. Yeah. Um, I'm DB Trivia. Marcos's ringtone is X Men the Animated Series animated series theme tune. I think that original. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Um, that might have been just a touch too. Like it's an extremely recognizable. I feel I I would not have minded if they changed it slightly to just resemble it so that like hardcore fans know as it is like what is serious a person as Marcos you know doing you know really important in the mutant underground would he have such a you know this kind of thing as this you know ringtone don't get me wrong love that theme C cannot get enough of listening to that theme uh, you know I watched every single episode is I don't know I guess was it half a year you know a little while back so listen to it like at least once a day for for what was that a couple of months I guess still listen still go back and listen to it every so often I cannot get enough of listening to that I just I don't know if I necessarily thought this was the right place to yeah anyway Producer Matt Nix says the cameo by X-Men creator Stan Lee happened through chance. Lee was in Dallas for a comic convention, which was where the shooting was taking place. He was able to shoot his cameo in 20 minutes. Nix said that's the kind of thing where I think people sometimes underestimate the degree to which we, we who make the show are just another group of fanboys trying to make something happen by the skin of our teeth. Maybe that's why there wasn't a line of dialogue, because it just happened like that. But yeah, that is really, really cool. When Andy Strucker is first introduced at school, he is sketching a wolf in a notebook. In the comics, Andreas and Andrea von Strucker are collectively known by the codename Fenris, sometimes Fenris twins. His name is taken from the Fenris wolf from Norse mythology, who is also a separate character in the Marvel Universe, and appears in Thor Ragnarok. Huh. One time X-Man Tessa, aka Sage, makes her live-action debut in this episode as a member of the Secret Mutant Underground. Not entirely sure why that one is specifically called out since there's others. Wait, is she the only? Well, let's see. Blink was already in Days of Future Past. Did we also see... Um, I'm actually... I Have we seen Polaris? Ah, maybe. Anyway, moving on. And, and yeah, Amy Acker also appeared on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and huh, a possible nod to the X-Men Wolverine there is a painting of a Wolverine on the wall behind Eclipse when he's waiting for his meeting with Reed Strucker and yeah um, the MDB goof section <laughs> Yeah, uh, this this is one of those things hit by the fact that a lot of people don't seem to know what a plot hole is. So three things have been entered as, as plot holes that is basically just like I disagree with those right with these writing decisions. You know, these are not actually plot holes. Um, it's, yeah, it's just it's the fact that you know the the. Yeah, they, they dislike some of the stuff that happens, you know, yeah, when Lorna uses her powers to cause pain on Ray Reed's knee, and the thing about, you know, why does Lorna think it's a good idea to test powers, test Andy's powers, you know, outside in the middle of the day, and, yeah, there's the yeah Reed and Kate accusing the principal of not wanting to help they said they only thought he was being bullied yeah it's just it's writing decisions that they they don't agree with and yeah um the let's see 
I think that might be what I yeah um, so I, I slightly referenced this line earlier in the episode I wanted to get the the quote right and, and underline I really this is a, a cool way to like yeah to tell a story in the X-Men universe in this like it's maybe also the fact that I they, they don't have the budget for this show to deliver the kind of action that the movies could so you know that also is accomplished by this but yeah you know after a while like in early X-Men comics there weren't a huge amount of of mutants but you know one yeah after a while there were a lot of extremely powerful mutants and this show is not really about the the god tier ones this is more about a group that you know yeah a lot that that struggle to to get by and we have the line the x-men the brotherhood we don't even know if they exist anymore we are alone and we're getting picked off one by one <laughs>